So in today's session, let's talk about on-premise versus cloud applications. So if any company is going to use Oracle applications, okay, how they can manage their servers, we'll look into those points. From that, what are the points we require, we will take. So for, let's talk about on-premise first. Okay. So on-premise servers. What does it mean by on-premise servers? It's very simple. If any company is going to implement Oracle applications, what they can do is they can buy the server infrastructure and they can take the license and they can maintain the applications and they can start using that applications. So this is the approach any company can follow. So when you talk about on-premise servers, okay, a company who is going to use Oracle applications, they have to purchase the physical servers. Okay, when they purchase the physical servers, those servers need to be placed in physical location. Say there is an organization who is running their operations in say USA. If they are running the business operations in USA, if they buy the server, Okay, to maintain the Oracle applications, they have to place in the specific location. So a client is based out in the US, they purchase server, physical server, they'll be placing that server in the US in the specific business location. And after buying the server, they have to take the license from Oracle, Oracle for respective applications. Say they are going to implement SEM applications and financials applications. For SEM as well as finance, up, finance applications, the organization or say client has to take the license from Oracle. After taking the license, those applications can be installed in the server with the help of DBA. DBA stands for Database Administrator. Okay, DBA, Database Administrator. Simply you can call as Apps DBA who can install the applications in the server, the DBA you can call as Apps DBA, Oracle Apps DBA. The Oracle Apps DBA can install those applications in the server, okay, which is purchased by the organization. Once the applications are installed, the functional consultants can implement those applications as per the organization requirement, okay. That part anyway, we'll see, that's what we are going to discuss as a core. So server point of view, when you talk about server, the, all the applications for which applications com companies taking the license from Oracle, all the applications need to be installed in the servers with the help of Oracle Apps DBA. So the server maintenance and everything should be taken care by Apps DBA only, Oracle Apps DBA who are installing, they have to maintain the, they have to take care of the maintenance of the server, any server related security, etc. Everything they have to take care. And say today we take the client taking the license from Oracle and when they are using that application, maybe after six months, one year or two years, Oracle may come up with the latest version. So if Oracle will come up with the latest version, so that upgrade should can be done by customer only. That means customer owned upgrades who are using that Oracle applications, they have to take the responsibility of upgrading from older version to latest version. And since the company is going to use the physical servers, physical servers will be located in the specific location. Okay, the performance point of view, that won't be any, any you don't see as a very rich performance. That means that the company, there is one company who is running the operations in the multiple countries. Say they have operations in India and US. If they place the server in US, okay, if they place the physical server in the US location, if the business users are trying to connect to the same server from India, so when user is trying to connect to server which is based out in USA, all the ways they have to submit the request to the server, there will be a lot of network traffic where multiple users will try to connect to the same server to work on that applications and all those requests need to be received by server and again server should respond to all those requests so through network in all this process it would be some sort of poor performance user point of view so 
and this is this is how you can find out if any company is going to use their own servers if any company is going to use their own servers for this oracle applications that you can call as on premise servers a company they'll buy the server infrastructure they'll take the license from oracle and they'll just install all the applications in the server and everything will be managed by dba there will be for security network administrator and everything the client should uh, take care of it uh, those roles also they have to take it and if oracle is going to come up with the latest version of the applications so that everything should be taken care by organization only they have to take the responsibility of upgrading from the older version to latest and uh, more or less comparatively it's a poor performance since the servers will be in the zone so locations and the users will be working from the different different locations so this is what we call as on premise servers based on these points don't compare with the cloud and all that we'll discuss but just to understand these points any questions from anyone please yeah um, lakshman is uh, fusion will support uh, rac or uh... the first point is the latest version of fusion applications oracle is not giving for on premise the older version says yes, oracle is giving in that case yes you can go with the rack or ac okay uh, that's not one question so yeah. when we first buy the servers and assume that that time we are going with scm and later in case if i want to go with financial as well so there would be only one server and we'll be uh, implementing the uh, i mean installing the finance applications as well in the same server right in the same server you can install n number of applications we have around 300 applications from oracle okay based on the server capacity you can install n number of applications yes you can do the phase by phase installation also you can do the implementation phase by phase that is possible in one server you can install <coughs> multiple applications any questions please see we are just trying to understand these few points we are not going to do anything related to this since we are going to work on the fusion cloud application just we have to understand how the cloud is different from on premise and what are the few points we should aware that's what we are trying to understand we are not going to involve in the buying the servers and we are not going to involve in the maintaining the servers we are not going to involve in the taking the license from oracle we are not going to install we are not going to go with the some db activities etc okay but in case of on premise how things can be managed we are trying to understand that's all any other questions here please so uh, lakshman in that case you know if we are going to use this cloud version from oracle then uh, there are two concepts one is one second, one second, server one second i'm sorry that's what i mentioned clearly don't compare with the cloud there is a next slide there we'll talk about cloud if you have any questions we'll talk on that now only this point on premise servers okay if you want to understand anything if you need clarity on any point in case of on premise servers if any company is going to use how things can be managed that's we are trying to understand okay based on these points any questions please no questions fine so this is how things can be managed when you talk about on premise servers most of the clients are using on premise servers in case of ebs 11a and ebs r12 Okay, EBS 11 and EBS R12. When you talk about cloud, almost all clients are using not on-premise servers, cloud servers. What does it mean? We'll see. We'll look into that. So this is what we have to understand about on-premise. Now let's talk about cloud computing. Okay, in case of on-premise, servers need to be purchased by clients. They have to take the license. they have to install the application they have to take care of the servers and application maintenance but in case of cloud computing how these things can be managed when you talk about cloud computing what companies will do is take example of oracle if we take example of oracle 
they will maintain the big servers, big machines. So this is a physical server. By using one physical server, they can create multiple virtual servers. The concept of cloud computing. Okay, In cloud computing, the cloud computing, what any cloud computing company will do is, by using physical servers, they can create the multiple virtual servers by using the concept called as virtualization. Okay, with the help of physical servers, they will create multiple virtual servers. These servers, they will give to the clients. Say there are 10 clients who wants to use Oracle Fusion applications. In that case, they no need to maintain their own servers. They can contact Oracle and what Oracle will do is by using the big servers, physical servers, they can create the virtual servers for each and every client. They will create the separate virtual server. They will be allocating those virtual servers to every client. So this is what they do basically. So that means in case of cloud, which company is going to use Oracle cloud applications, they are not, they don't need to use any physical servers. So the actual physical servers will be managed by Oracle. By with the help of those virtual physical servers, Oracle will create virtual servers. Okay, virtual servers for each client, and they will give the access to those servers. Which servers? Virtual servers. As a company, we can access and we can implement and we can use and we can pay to the Oracle. And we have other slide which talks about more detail level. Cloud servers. In cloud computing, what happens is, as we discussed, Oracle will create the virtual servers. The same point I mentioned. In case of cloud, ser cloud servers in the cloud computing, so every client will be using virtual servers. There won't be any physical server for any company. The actual physical servers will be managed by Oracle. And with the help of that physical servers, what are the virtual servers? Oracle will create those they will share with their clients. So for each company, they will give one virtual server. So in case of physical servers, the physical servers need to be placed in the physical location. But what about the virtual servers? In case of virtual servers, the virtual servers, they'll keep available internet as a source. Okay, they'll keep those virtual servers internet as a source. What they will do is, by using the physical servers, they will create the virtual servers. Say, they are given this S1 virtual servers to one client. Say the client is doing the business in India, US and UK. Take example. The client is doing the business in India, US and UK. In these three countries, the client is doing the business. So in that case, when the, when the Oracle is giving this virtual server to that client, when they are allocating, they will identify where the client is doing the business operation. That means users will be accessing this virtual servers from the which locations they will identify. But after identifying, what they will do is the same virtual servers, they will try to say for example, client is doing the operations in India, US and UK. So this virtual server, this virtual copy of the server, they will maintain in their data centers in India, US and UK. If you place a server in US, from all the countries you have to connect to the same server. But what Oracle is doing is, by using the physical servers, they are creating the virtual servers. Wherever they have a data center, which are very nearest to the clients, they will keep this virtual server available within those data centers. Say, even the actual physical servers Oracle, they may have in US, but if the client is from India, what they will do is whatever the virtual ser server they allocated for the client, they will keep these virtual servers to be available in the India data center, which is owned by Oracle. In the same way if client is from UK, okay, of course the client has operations along with India, say UK also, for UK users accessibility purpose to keep their, keep that performance better and uh, easy accessibility and to give a very good performance from the server side for user point of view, the same virtual server, one more copy they will put in the UK data center. Okay. And when user is trying to connect from India, 
the this through cloud computing automatically the user request will go and hit the nearest data center where that virtual server is residing so that's how from where user is trying to connect to the server through cloud computing they will be routing that user access to the nearest data center the same virtual copy which they are maintaining in the different different data centers which is belongs to one client those will be all the time online synchronization those will sync the online synchronization would be there we should not think these are the three copies three are one copies and replication and those will be in the full synchronization so because of that reason okay from any country user is trying to connect so in every country Oracle is going to maintain their data centers the virtual server would be available only the point is you should connect to the internet then you will just you will be able to reach to reach to the virtual server which is residing in their Oracle data centers which is close to the business user so that's how that can be connected let's go to these few points the first point is virtual servers in case of cloud or cloud computing the clients will get the virtual servers no client will get the physical server the virtual servers will be residing internet as a source wherever is internet you can think your server is available the reason is in every country almost the Oracle will maintain their data centers that is the reason to every client the server the virtual server should be available in the very nearest data center so if you you can connect through that server through internet simply you can say the virtual servers will reside in the internet as a source and in case of uh, cloud computing the virtual servers okay here we discussed in case of on-premise we have to purchase a license from oracle to use the applications in case of cloud computing you no need to take the license from oracle take, just take the subscription you take the subscription say you want to use scm under financials take the subscription when you compare with the license fee subscription fees is very very less okay so just take the subscription from oracle use the applications based on the number of users you can pay to oracle but in case of on-premise you have to take the license where it would be costing very high here since virtual servers you don't need to buy any server infrastructure in case of on-premise we have to buy the big missions to install and maintain the applications in case of cloud we don't need to buy any servers servers will be provided by oracle that to virtual servers so the cost also you no need to worry about the cost you no need to buy any servers so oracle itself will provide the virtual servers where directly they will give the product access so there you can take the subscription instead of taking the license and in case of cloud no installation of applications in case of on-premise okay the db has to install all the oracle applications the oracle apps db has to install all the applications but in case of cloud computing when you have access to cloud servers nothing but virtual servers so no installation of applications that oracle will take care what are the virtual server oracle is providing to us within that you can find the applications as installed we don't need to install the server maintenance will be done by oracle dbs only in case of cloud servers we don't need to manage our own dbs in case of on-premise we, we require dbs okay if you are running the company if you are using the oracle application we need DBA who can install and who can take care of the maintenance of the servers but in case of cloud computing so the server maintenance will be done by Oracle DBA and the DBA is also from Oracle only and here in case of on-premise customer owned upgrades if Oracle is going to come up with the latest version so we have to do all the upgrades from client side that should be done but in case of cloud computing so if you are using the virtual servers from oracle the auto upgrades are possible okay the auto upgrades are possible so whenever oracle will comes up with the latest release automatically that servers will get upgraded with the latest version and there will be for sure high performance since servers are virtual servers those are not going to locate in the physical location and those servers will be available in the nearest data centers for the client that is the reason user experience also would be very rich so this is all about cloud and we have few more slides to discuss more detail level what is SaaS, PaaS, IaaS and differences but just to understand these points based on these points any questions from anyone please
uh, I welcome one question. Is there any uh, specification from cloud computing point of view on the desktops that need to be used for uh, accessing? Your voice uh, is not clear. Your voice is not clear, please. Okay. Hello, am I clear now? Yeah, please. Please make sure that there is no background noise from your end. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, just have a, have a question on uh, if there is any uh, restriction or any specification uh, uh, as far as the desktop uh, systems are concerned. No, uh, no. For accessing you can, application. In case of cloud, you can access the application from any device which is connected with internet. You can use a smartphone, you can use iPad, and you can use desktop, laptop, any device which is connected with internet. That's how they build those applications in the cloud environment. No restriction. Any other questions? Next one, one question. Uh, what exactly is the main difference between the physical server and the data center? Physical server and data centers. Okay. The data center, it's a server kind of thing only. Okay. So in case of server, you can have a small server for one client. The data centers can be used by multiple clients. What clients can do is instead of buying the servers, they can take the hosting from the data centers. In that data centers, which are maintained by third party. Okay, they are uh, data centers. They also maintain the servers only. Okay, we'll take the servers on rent base. That's how the concept works. But in case of Oracle, they'll be owning the data centers and they'll maintain the server they'll maintain these servers within that the virtual servers they'll be giving to their clients so in that case the virtual server that is uh, uh, allocated to a particular client let's say it's present here mm -hmm. so that virtual client i mean that uh, client has three different locations geographical location let's say us uk and uh, india so they have three data centers in all these regions, right? So uh, all these servers would be in sync. Uh, like yes, the that's what I mentioned. Yes. The virtual servers, what they'll be, reality, they'll create only one virtual server, but th they'll make that replication in those three different data centers, which are available, which are very close to the client. It's not mandatory. If client is running the business in three countries, the three countries, the data centers should be available. Take example of Oracle. If you take the, the current example, India, US, and UK, the client may have data centers in US and UK only. Okay. So in that case, when India user is trying to connect to the server, the server will identify which data center is very close to India user, whether US data center or UK data center to very nearest data center, it will connect. That's how that logic will work. If any data center is in India for the from Oracle and when user is trying to connect and the same virtual servers are replicated in the India data center also, then the user will get connected to the virtual servers which are residing in the India data center. Fine. Any other questions, please? No questions. Okay. Done. So that's the difference between on premise and cloud. In case of on premise, servers client has to purchase. In case of cloud computing, client no need to purchase any servers. Client can use the virtual servers, which will be provided by Oracle. And in case of on-premise, the servers will be located in the specific physical location. When you talk about virtual servers, those will be placed in the internet. In on-premise, for Oracle applications, client has to take the license. But in case of virtual servers or in cloud computing, the client has to take the subscription for the application usage. No license is required. And in on-premise, what are the applications client is taking the license? Those need to be installed in the server with the help of Oracle Apps DBA. But in case of cloud, so Oracle will take care of the installation and all. Just we can start using those applications after implementation. 
and here maintenance should be taken care by the client DBA but in case of virtual servers or cloud computing the server maintenance will be taken care by Oracle DBS only. If any latest version of applications the client has to take the responsibility of upgrading to latest version but in case of virtual servers that upgrades can take place automatically auto upgrade is possible since servers will be located in the very physical location and when users trying to connect to the servers from the different geographies all the ways the request should reach the server which is located in the specific physical location and it has to respond to all the user requests there should could be big queue and I mean the network there could be some lot of traffic since from the different country user requests will hit this same server that is the reason the users will experience poor performance but in case of cloud even that is a one virtual server that they'll replicate in the nearest data centers for every client look uh, business uh, wherever they are operating the business in the business locations so that's how that they'll there won't be a lot of burden on that server and uh, there, there won't be any time taking when user is requesting to get some information on trying to create some transactions from server side so that's how you can see the difference between on-premise and uh, cloud computing related cloud servers or say virtual servers now if any client is going to use okay virtual servers nothing but cloud servers so what are the points they have to understand which servers they have to take within the cloud servers we have a different flavors or different options or different modes let's look into those if any company wants to use the virtual servers Ideally, when you talk about Oracle Fusion applications, now every client should go with the, this cloud server only. When they are going to take the Oracle Fusion applications related access from Oracle, these three options are available. The one is SaaS. SaaS stands for Software as a Service. The other one is PaaS. PaaS stands for Platform as a Service. The third one is IaaS. IaaS stands for Infrastructure as a Service. So if you are going to implement Oracle applications for your client, your client should choose any one of this option. Whether they want to go with the SaaS or PaaS or IaaS, they have to choose. Based on this selection, the further implementation and certain controls or say privileges and all totally depends. Okay, let's talk about one by one. Okay. Say you have a your client called as ABC client, they want to use Oracle Fusion applications. When they want to use Fusion applications for their organizations, when they want to implement Fusion applications, so they have to take the servers with the SaaS option or PaaS or IaaS. Which one they have to choose? Let's look into how these three are different. So first let's talk about SaaS. Okay, software as a service. In case of if any client is taking subscription from Oracle for SaaS, any client is taking the SaaS subscription from Oracle, they'll get the access to standard product. What are the product is developed by Oracle? Say we are taking the subscription for SCM and Finance and HRMS or HCM, Human Capital Management. For these three areas, we are going to take the license, we are going to take the subscription from Oracle for SaaS subscription. So in that case, Yes, we'll get HCM applications, SCM applications, and finance applications. So when you get those applications, and you can implement and you can start using those applications. You can start using those applications. If you want to build some new functionality, that is not possible. The functionality customization, not possible. No. You cannot do any functionality customization. If you get, okay, SaaS-based virtual server from Oracle whatever the applications we have within that virtual server those you can implement as per client requirement and you can use it but if you want to build any functionality if you want to do building some new functionality simply we call as customization so if you want to do any functionality any future related customization in case of SaaS it is not possible but even if you have a SaaS subscription from Oracle the reports you can customize. What are the new reports you require? Oracle will provide many reports for each and every application. Apart from those reports, 
if you need any new reports any other reports as per your business requirement those reports can be customized those can be created in case of saas that means reports customization is possible in case of saas it's s and third part integrations say you are using purchasing application from oracle and inventory you are using from abc product you are using some abc third party application to manage your inventory part now you have to connect the inventory with your purchasing application so that scenarios you can handle in case of saas so or else it could be any other application so what are the fusion applications we are using so to those applications you can integrate you can connect any third party applications to run your business processes okay the whatever the business process you are doing in the organization those you can handle through the system that means the third part integrations are possible in case of saas and auto upgrade okay since you are not creating the customizations that means you are not disturbing the standard product so whenever oracle comes up with a latest version your saas environment your server will get upgraded to latest version automatically it's hardly rising on sr you have to raise sr to oracle saying that you want to upgrade to latest version okay or else by following certain intervals oracle itself will upgrade so you have to raise on sr to oracle and they'll apply the patches okay they'll auto upgrade in your test environment you can test and verify the next day you can give the confirmation to them okay by the end of the day your environment will be upgraded with the latest version reason in case of saas you are not doing any functionality customization means you are not okay you are not disturbing the standard product since you are using the standard product as it is whatever oracle develop so you can automatically you can upgrade the product to latest version and support from oracle dba team when you are using this saas based virtual servers you can take the support from oracle dba team we no need to maintain any dbas okay any sort of dba works all can be handled by oracle dba team any sort of patching or cloning anything take any task okay so any dba related activities will be taken care by oracle okay this is all about saas here and we just will talk about pass and ias also no need to compare the uh, the saas with the pass and ias right now once we go through those slides also we, we can compare and we can understand if required so for now if you have any questions to understand about saas subscription please let me know and one more point the most of the clients okay most of the clients i could say 95% of the clients are going with the saas only okay the clients who are using oracle fusion cloud applications out of the total clients 95% of clients are using saas based subscription only in that case they cannot do any customizations related to functionality they can use the product as it is how oracle is providing and they can do the reports customizations and they can go with the third part integrations why they are not why they are choosing this saas when it is not allowing for some functionality customizations the advantage everybody is looking at is auto upgrades yes certain functionality may not be available in the current release but tomorrow or later oracle can add that new functionality when the servers are going to upgrade automatically they can just up those features also as per their business requirement and oracle will take care of the dba related support so we no need to have a dba team or specific dba dedicated dba so th these are the reasons why the clients are going with that again as a saas subscription is a co will cost very less and uh, it allows for auto upgrades these are the key benefits why every client is going with the saas any questions on this point from anyone please Uh, Lashuna, how about in uh, SaaS? Uh, can client uh, can do the page level any customizations or uh, instead of uh, uh, to make the changes on I the internet? I got your page? question. I got your question. The page level customizations means really those are not customizations. Hardly you can do the basic personalizations. The page level. Say 
you have one optional field you can make it as a mandatory the field is optional you can make it as the field is mandatory field compulsory field or else you want to remove one field or else you want to remove one tab or you want to disable one tab so these and all you can do with the personalization concept those are not customizations in personalizations also you can do very basic personalizations only by writing some piece of code you cannot control any page related functionality that is not possible in sas so in the other way you see you just like uh, you can do uh, disabling and enabling and removing but we cannot add you are saying right yes exactly. add new field exactly exactly okay when you talk about adding you are doing you are trying to enhance that functionality the page functionality that is not possible okay yeah any other questions do we have any kind of dff or kf kind of functionalities uh, available yeah what i'm trying to say is uh, in this case if we cannot add a new field So do we have any kind of functionality like descriptive flex field? What we yeah, use? that is there. That is there. Same as EBS, we have DFF, descriptive flex field, to capture the additional information. Okay, in in any page, but it won't add any functionality, right? It won't change any behavior. You can set these additional fields need to be captured as a mandatory optional. Okay, that doesn't change the behavior of the page or functionality. That you can do same as EBS. you can capture you can capture additional information that will be we'll see in the classes also i'll take you through dffs also any other questions yeah so in this case yeah. lakshman oh sorry in this case after we done the page level personalizations when sorry, uh, sorry. when did that's what i said page level customizations we cannot do in case of sas no i mean uh, personalization to enable okay. and disable the columns but uh, after uh, the client they made those kind of changes but when oracle when they do the auto upgrades how these things can be controlled in the client point of view no those won't get disturbed okay those won't get disturbed so they will be just applying the logic of announcing if any announcements they will add to certain functionality if any new features that will be added but in the standard functionality standard functions or standard features you are not disturbing the page level just you are building the framework as a optional and mandatory say simple example you have one mandatory field can you make it as optional no if it is very essential to keep it as a mandatory as per the standard application process you cannot do that so those you cannot do okay which which doesn't disturb the actual the form or page related functionality those only you can modify okay even oracle will upgrade those won't get disturbed those will remain same or anything they are just adding because of that upgrade those will be added but existing won't be disturbed because your functionality is not changed that you you are not disturbing that's it any other questions please lakshman it suppose you know my client is running uh, their their business is running on r12 at this point okay and yes. they are planning to you know move into cloud now okay. uh, if they have major customization in their application right so how those can be you know um uh, you know move to my cloud version is this is a separate i mean other than saas we yeah, have i got your question i got your question yeah so the very first okay. point if your client is running ebs applications if they are using the ebs applications if they want to move to fusion application the very first point is they cannot up migrate or they cannot upgrade from the ebs to fusion that is the first point then how they can move from ebs to fusion so when when the client is moving to fusion they have to treat their ebs application is legacy so when you do the ebs implementations before coming to oracle ebs applications client might be using some different applications those different application we treat as a 
legacy system, right? In the same way, now when we are going to implement Oracle Fusion applications for any client, we have to treat EBS as a legacy only. So whatever the approach we follow in case of fresh implementation, by following the same approach, we have to implement Fusion applications, even client is using EBS application. That means even client is using the EBS application, Fusion we have to implement from the scratch that you may call as a re-implementation since environment is going to be changed instead of EBS this is a cloud and if you have customizations in the EBS those cannot be invited by SaaS subscription in that case we have a PaaS subscription which we are going to discuss in the next slide so SaaS doesn't support to do any customizations so that is the reason client cannot opt for SaaS based subscription in that case, client should go for pass. We'll be discussing about pass also in two minutes. So before that, any questions based on sure, that, please. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Any questions? Uh, sorry, one question. Uh, subscription wise, is uh, pass more costlier than SaaS? Pass, yes, costly because that gives the flexibility of doing the customizations. Okay. Answer is yes. Any other questions? Right. No questions. So that's all about SaaS. Okay. So in SaaS, we cannot do any functional related customizations. That means if you want to create one new applications in the SaaS, that is not possible. Reports, yes, you can customize. When I talk about reports, it's all about how you want to view the data. That means it doesn't disturb any application functionality. Which data you want to see accordingly you can create the report. So those are allowed. Those we should not treat as a customizations in case of cloud. Ideally you can say customizations are not allowed in the SaaS. That means functionality related customizations are not allowed. Report related customizations are allowed. And third part integrations are allowed. Auto upgrade this is the best. Uh, I mean. Uh, benefit to what clients will see. So auto upgrades are possible in case of SaaS. That means whenever you get the SaaS subscription from client, the virtual server with the SaaS subscription, you can just consume that server related. Within the server you have applications, middleware, means operating system and the server. Within the server we have to install the operating system. With, with the help of, within the operating system we'll install the application. That's how users can have access to that applications. So this is all about SAS. Now we'll look into PaaS. PaaS stands for Platform as a Service. Okay. So here also you'll get access to standard application, standard product. Whatever the license you are taking from Oracle, yes, we'll get the access to standard product which is developed by Oracle. But in case of PaaS, Oracle will give the platform for us. Oracle will give the platform for us to do the functionality related customization. You want to develop one page within the payables, you want to implement, you want to develop one page in the purchasing application, you want to create one page within the order management, you want to create one page in the receivables or inventory, take any application, you want to create one page which allows you to capture certain information which is really required as per your business process. So in that case, that page is uh, you can treat as a certain it it will add some functionality within the business process that you can call it as page or certain functionality you can develop and you can deploy the pass environment will allow us to develop the functionality the same can be deployed in the same environment okay however we do in EBS and altogether you can develop the new applications also the pass that platform as a service that platform will allow us to do any sort of customizations and the same can be deployed if you want to develop one page you can develop and you can deploy and you can use in the specific application or business process or else if you want to develop new application along with the applications whatever you have access from oracle yes you can develop those you can integrate with the oracle given applications and you can just run your custom business processes since you are using the pass environment and rest of points almost same reports customization here you are able to do functionality customizations also 
So report customizations even you can do in the SaaS. The same is possible in the PaaS also. Yes, here also you can do the third part integrations. The disadvantages with the PaaS is auto upgrades are not possible. If you are disturbing the standard product as per a requirement, okay, that means as as per your business requirement, you are customizing. In other words, you can say you are disturbing the standard product. When we are disturbing, Oracle simply cannot auto upgrade that PaaS environment. If you want to upgrade to latest version. Okay, from older version to latest version, you have to take care of the responsibility of upgrading. Okay, you have to just you should have a team who will be taking care of this upgrade activity from the older version to latest version. Oracle is not going to support you to perform this auto upgrade activity that is applicable only SaaS or PaaS. Okay, customer owned upgrades. Customer should take the responsibility as a client. Client owned upgrades. They have to deploy the team to perform the upgrade activity from the older version to latest version. There, whatever the support is required from the DBA, you can take the support from Oracle Cloud DBA team. Okay, you can call as Oracle DBA team or your Oracle Cloud DBA team. So you can take the support from Oracle, the patch applications, etc. For whatever what sort of help we require from Oracle DBAs. That support you can get from Oracle when you are using the PaaS environment. Okay, the primary difference is in case of SaaS, you cannot do any function functionality related customizations, but in PaaS you can do the customization which are related to functionality. In SaaS subscription, auto upgrades are possible. Whenever Oracle will comes up with the latest version, your environment will be converted with the latest. And in case of PaaS, we cannot do that. Okay, we should plan. Okay, we should wait because Oracle is going to come up with the latest releases every six months once. If you are a past customer, every six months once you cannot go. Maybe you may plan after one year or two years or three years because if you want to do upgrade again, that will become small size project for you. So that is the reason. Even Oracle comes up with the latest versions of new functionalities announcements. Easily you cannot upgrade. You have to schedule and you have you have to plan and schedule. And you can do it, but again, that will become some sort of additional work for any client who are using the pass. So this is all about pass. Any questions on this, please? Now you can talk about pass, or you can compare pass with the SaaS, and you can raise your questions. Okay, no questions. So who are using SaaS and who is using pass? When I talk about SaaS, small and mid-sized clients are using the SaaS, and very large clients are using the PaaS. When I talk about very big organization, the large organization definitely their business process you don't find as a simple. So that would be very much complex. When it is complex, the application need to be customized. In that scenario. The big organizations never go with the SaaS subscription. They always go with the PaaS. Most of all the small and mid-sized clients. So this SaaS suits best because Oracle has almost vast functionality by understanding the different industries and global business requirements. So that's how they build the product. So any client is going to use this application more or less. That would the client requirement would fit into the standard product. So in that case, always the best choice for the clients of small and mid size is SaaS. So any questions here, please? How about uh, Lashman database access uh, in both the SaaS and PaaS? Yes, Will we can get access the, the database. Team access? You can access. Yes, you can access the database. Yeah, you will have more flexibility in case of. SaaS, you cannot create the schemas and all. Okay, just you can connect to the database and you can query. You cannot create any tables, nothing. But in case of PaaS, you are going to develop the new functionality. For that, if you are creating one page to store the data, you have to create the table, or else some set of custom tables, whatever you are creating, you can group into such a schema also. You can create the custom schemas. You can create the custom tables. Up to that level, you get, you'll get, you'll have access to database in case of PaaS. In SaaS, just you can query and see the data. 
that's it you cannot do any uh, sort of additional operations like creating the tables creating the schemas etc that's the difference any other questions okay so here you can look at this slide here within this in the image it says so everywhere you'll have a server and a operating system within that and application but the applications we can have a control right so if you see a previous slide this everything will be in the oracle control but in case of pass so oracle is providing the platform where you can manage the applications as per your requirement so this enables the additional function of building you can build new functionality in case of saas you can use as it is you can consume here you can consume along with that you can build additional functionality to use as per your requirement any questions please fine right, no questions now the next one is ias ias stands for infrastructure as a service so it's simply hosting service okay so you can buy the virtual server from oracle without applications and all okay so just ias is for hosting service you can just buy the empty server access within that you can install whatever the operating system you want whatever the applications you want to install you can install it and you can use it when i talk about ias there is no point about you will have oracle fusion applications and all only in these two cases saas and pass will get that along with the applications and you can implement and you can use so ias infrastructure oracle will provide the infrastructure within that infrastructure you can install what are the applications you want to install and you can use but the hosting service oracle will provide or any cloud computing company provides through virtual server concept that's it so here we are, we never deal with this ias related subscription from any client so if you are going to work for any fusion cloud implementations mostly it would be 99% saas only 1 or 2% pass so any questions from anyone to understand saas pass ias and differences i think please okay any questions from anyone please fine so most of the clients are using saas only done so that's all about understanding which server we are going to use now okay we are going to use saas based virtual server our classes when you are going to work for your client also will be or mostly will be working on saas if your client is very big client and their business process demands customization in that case a client may have pass okay so that any questions from anyone to understand these points please yes, i have one question for example in the saas and uh, some functionality we need means it's a very urgent functionality so is possible to get those functionality as a page means uh, as a adf page i didn't understand in the in case of client uh, my question is yes, i don't yeah no you said client is using saas yeah is saas and some urgent functionality is needed urgent so is possible urgent functionality means any page is required for uh, yeah that's what that uh, for client customization in that case we have option to switch from saas to pass you are using the saas Only. you want to do the customizations is it possible to do the customization in the saas no if you want to do the customization you have to switch to no subscription then you will get a platform which allows you to do the customizations that's it okay yeah done fine so that's all about yeah and if we want to make any you know uh, data model changes so i um, mean say if you want to extend any tables kind of thing uh, uh, what is the best option to go that that i'll be showing in the classes oracle given bi page from where you can go and write the queries 
within the application environment only you can do you cannot connect this with the third party tools like evs toad or some other tools you cannot connect the database since we have in the cloud within the application they given the framework where you can go and write the queries see please uh, don't unmute when, what is that actually when I, when I, one second one second one second when I'm trying to explain something, don't uh, unmute. Uh, we are getting some background noise from someone. Okay, if you have some background noise, please, please take care of it. Yeah, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, what is that? Uh, you know, framework actually. Framework means it's a, it's a complete the uh, uh, user interface. Okay, <laughs> just user interface from where you can go and write the queries. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, actually, not that my question. Actually, you know, uh, you said that uh, that BAE framework or something. Yeah, yeah. BA, BA page. Okay, BA catalog. You know, BA reports. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got it. Actually, yeah. you are talking about OTBA. Yeah, BA is different. OTBA is different. I'm talking about BA. You will see in the class. Okay. Anyway, that. Okay, okay. Can come to that point. Otherwise, we'll see in the classes. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? One more question, Lakshmi. See, yeah. uh, uh, assume that I am using SEM and financials, and okay. due to some reasons, only in SEM, only in order management, I need to uh, create a new form. So in that case, totally have to move from SAS to PaaS because correct, correct. my yes, exactly. only Yes. You cannot get the SAS or PaaS subscriptions for module wise. Okay. So you have to. Turn into completely SaaS to pass. It may be your customization requirement, maybe for one application or only finance or only SCM or only for two applications. Whatever it may be, you are in which environment? That is important. You are in the SaaS environment or pass environment. Based on the environment only, you can you'll be able to do or I mean that will be decided. Yeah. Environment. Not application specific. Any questions? Uh, Lakshman, a general question like uh, you said, like uh, mid levels and small companies are using the uh, might go to only for the SaaS. And for example, if you have uh, big clients like a GE and a Cisco or HLant or WHO, any other clients, uh, these are the big clients and they have been on to R2. Sorry? Pass. They can go for a pass. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so in that case, uh, since R2L is being uh, supported until 2030, the big clients will not be moving to pass, I believe. There are few right. clients uh, who started with the cloud pass. They are big clients. Of course, Oracle is going to support up to 2030, but still they started uh, re-implementing in the cloud environment. A few big clients who are already using the EBS product. So. Okay. That, that's how they can plan. See, they'll always think on uh, ROI, right? When they, how much they invested, how much they spent mm -hmm. for that implementation, how many years back, and how much benefit they could take out of that uh, EBS implementation. Uh, these are all, they'll do the calculation. If Based on that, they can take the decision and they can plan whether to go with the cloud or still they want to continue a few more years on this and they'll do a lot of calculations right if they go with the cloud how much cost they can reduce compared to the current environment etc etc so these sort of uh, points they'll consider and they'll take the decision there are few clients who started and there are few clients big clients who are not using this uh, ebs applications and who started with the cloud you could see in the market okay yeah. Okay. yeah. And indirectly, it means like what I sense is like uh, the more openings would be from the Oracle side, right? Oracle Core. Cloud, Oracle Cloud. Yeah. Oracle Cloud, that too functional. Yeah, Oracle Cloud. I mean to say like uh, since the SaaS is being monitored by completely by owned by, uh, I mean, supported by the Oracle uh, company, right? So, yeah. so what I was thinking like, uh, will the openings be more on the Oracle side? Because uh, the but client will point, be accessing one this. One point, I got what you are thinking. See, in case of EBS, who has to manage the servers? 
Oracle. No, no, no. In case of EBS. Oh, sorry. In EBS, uh, the client has to. Client only. Who yes. has to manage from client side? Oracle DBA. Oracle Apps DBS. Oracle DBA, yes. So if the servers are managed by client, Oracle DBA will get the job, right? Yes. Now in case of cloud, Oracle DBS will manage. That means there are less opportunities for Oracle DBS. If servers are managed by client, and those can be customized. Any functionality can be customized in case of on-premise, the servers which are managed by client. So if customizations can be done, any application, any client customization would be flexible. If required, those can be customized. The flexibility would be there. In that case, technical people will get more jobs if any requirement is there for customization. Now in case of SaaS, can we do the customizations? No. No. So of course, client will take the decision. They will think on that point whether they need customizations or not. So here, customizations are not possible. Only report you can customize, or else you can do the integration. And in Fusion, what Oracle did is, what are the primary customization? What are the primary technical work is required in the EBS as a conversions? Now in the Fusion, that is a functional work. They converted. The conversions can be handled by functional people. We'll be covering in our classes how to do that. So okay. the less opportunities for technical people in cloud. But functional, whatever the scope of work we have in the EBS for functional people, that got increased. Okay, that is yeah. technical things also they converted to functional. That is the reason what the companies are doing is they try to they're trying to reduce the burden of technical part. Even something is there as a technical, they are not coming up with uh, writing too much of coding and programming, etc. They are trying to come up with the tools and techniques where that can be done with a drag and drops, with less coding or say zero coding. So okay. that's how thing, I mean, you could see in the upcoming products, whatever you see. Okay. Right? So there, will be, there will be enough opportunities for functional people. That's what uh, in the last session also we discussed. The DBAs and apps technical consultants, they all are converting to functional roles. Okay, that we can see in the market. Any other questions, please? Fine. So, done. Okay. Seems to no questions. So now let's talk about the business process. Here I'll take you through very high level. So take any organization. In any organization, the very primary activities are what is purchasing, or you can call it as procurement. Other one is sales. Okay. So these are primary activities where every organization do. So in every organization, there will be need of purchasing something, right? If organization into some sales, so to do the sales activity, they have to purchase some, maybe they may purchase raw material or they may purchase finished good, they may do some assembling or manufacturing whatever it may be, we have to purchase. And as a part of sales activity, whatever we purchase that we may sell as these with some margin or else we may manufacture and we may sell to the customer. Ideally, these are the two activities you can find in any and every organization, purchases and sales. So now let's talk about purchasing process or procurement process. Take simple example, okay. Mr. X is a student. Okay, I'm taking example. Mr. X is a student. Mr. X is student. Mr. X wants to purchase something. 
what Mr. X wants to purchase. Say Mr. X wants to purchase laptop. Okay, the requirement is laptop. Now what Mr. X do? Okay, he is a student. Mr. X wants to purchase a laptop. That is the requirement of Mr. X. Now what Mr. X is going to do exactly? Anyone please, the reality. He identified his requirement. His requirement is laptop. Mr. X wants to purchase the laptop. Now what exactly Mr. X is going to do? Mr. X is student, is an individual. You go to various shops and identify the price and then decide. Yes, goes to various shops. Then? You know very well, everybody knows what individuals Okay. Get the code. What is from all the subs and company yes. each of? Yeah. I just clearly mentioned yes. That that's what you are telling. That's true. I mentioned the point as student. So when Mr. X is a student, whenever you identify you need laptop, so definitely you will contact his parents. He has to take the permission. He says I need laptop. When his parents says okay, you can go ahead and you can purchase laptop. Then he can start finding the quotations. Okay, he'll take the permission from parents. Then he can start visiting the shops or online, whatever it may be. He'll just go and get the quotations. After getting the quotations, he will just look into all the quotations. Who is giving the best quotation as per the configuration requirement, whatever the laptop is required. He will look into different, he'll, he'll visit the shops and take the quotations. Mr. X look into different quotations, which you may call as quotation analysis. You will be analyzing who is giving the best price and all. Okay, warranties, guarantees, etc. And then Mr. X will take the decision to buy the laptop from specific shop. The reason is price is less and other benefits. And he will take the lab, he will go to the shop and he will take the laptop and he will make the payment. Done. So in this entire process, who is involving Mr. X is involving because X is individual. Since he is a student, he is taking the permission from his parents for money. So, if the same requirement for any company, okay, what process need to be followed? Of course, this, the same points are written here, you can see. Procurement process. First, Mr. X should identify the requirement. Requirement is laptop. Then he is asked to take the approach from his parent. Then he will be visiting shops and they will get the quotations from the different shops and they will look after all the quotations who's giving the best price and that, that, that only we call as quotation analysis then the Mr. X has to choose the best quotation and he will visit the shop and he will purchase the laptop then he will make the payment, he will take the laptop done, everything is done by Mr. X if the same process if like Mr. X required laptop in the same way if any organization is required laptop what process need to be followed and what are the different departments will be involved in this process we will look into this. So here I have a just diagram which talks about how the communication takes place across the department if you take example of is buying the laptop. Okay, we will understand all those points. So, basically we have inventory department. So, whenever the organization need laptop, here why laptop is required? Two reasons. Maybe the laptop is required to use internally or else there may be order from their customer. Okay. So, there may be order from the customer. Say, for example, customer is asking for the organization received an order for 100 laptops. Okay, the organization who will receive the orders from the customers? Sales department. Right? Sales department receives orders from the customer, 100 laptops. The sales department will talk to inventory department saying that we got one order from customer, customer required 100 laptops. When sales department will talk to inventory department, so inventory department will verify the stock. If stock is available, they can supply that material. If stock is not available, 
then the purchasing process will start okay say there is order from the customer for 100 laptops and when we check the material quantity for the laptops within the inventory department within the warehouse say we don't have stock now inventory department should involve in this inventory department should have a communication with the payables department payables with other departments to execute this process to complete the full cycle of this procurement process now what is the primary okay purpose of inventory inventory department in the inventory department we can maintain the stock okay within the inventory department we can maintain the, any stock so now we require 100 laptops so the 100 laptops are not available within the inventory department now what inventory department will do is inventory department will raise the requisition okay inventory department will raise the requisition saying we need 100 laptops within how many days okay they'll raise the require requisition requisition is nothing but requirement what is required that they'll raise as a requisition so when they raise the requisition within the inventory department within the inventory department they have to get the approvals for that okay the inventory department has to raise the requisition by stating 100 laptops are required within four days because within six days or five days we have to ship to the customer so inventory department will raise the requisition for requirement what they have and that should be approved within the inventory department by supervisor or someone else who is the responsible to approve the requisitions so once requisition is approved okay first activity is requisition creation the second activity is that should be approved by supervisor ideally okay so once requisition is approved in the inventory department what inventory department will do is they'll talk to purchasing department saying that we have a requirement for 100 laptops yes we raise the requisition that got approved and that information they'll share with the purchasing department so inventory department is going to share the approved requisition information with the purchasing department the based on the approved requisition what purchasing department will do is okay based on that approved requisition they'll create the rfq So once they receive the approved requisition, they'll request for quotation from the suppliers. RFQ means quotations. They'll request for quotation. They'll request the request the suppliers to provide the quotations. They'll send the quotations to the supplier saying that we need 100 laptops. This is the configuration. This is the time, and this is the credit period etc etc okay we are expecting that's how just they'll be giving the they'll be requesting for quotations whenever purchasing department will request for quotations the suppliers will respond by providing the quotations that means the purchasing department will receive quotations okay whenever purchasing department is requesting for quotations from the multiple vendors the vendors will provide the quotations purchasing department will receive the quotations once the purchasing department will receive the quotation, they have to analyze those quotations. Okay, they have to analyze the quotations saying who is giving the best price, who is giving the best payment terms, and who is giving the credit, etc. These are all points they will validate. There may be supplier who is giving the each laptop at 35,000. Maybe uh, for 35,000, the payment terms may be immediate. Okay. But there may be other supplier who is offering the same laptop with the same configuration instead of 35, 38,000, 3,000 extra. But that supplier may give payment terms as three months. That means we can pay after three months. Then really the purchasing department will look into all those points and they'll take the decision. 35,000 we have to pay immediately. 38,000 we have to pay after three months. They'll choose. If they have funds availability and all, they may go with 35,000. Quotation if they don't have funds readily, they may go with the 38,000 okay quotation. So that's how just they'll look into all these points. They'll look into all these points that only we call as quotation analysis. They'll receive the quotations and purchasing department will do quotation analysis. Okay, they do the quotation analysis. By doing the analysis, they will choose the best quotation. The purchasing department will choose 
best quotation. So they'll choose the best quotation. After choosing the best quotation, they'll place the order to that supplier. They choose the best quotation from so and so supplier. Maybe they may choose from multiple suppliers also. From which suppliers they are choosing the, they are identifying the quotations are good. They'll place the order to their suppliers, that's su that supplier. Okay. They'll take the final decision and they'll place the order to that supplier. Since the purchasing department is placing the order to supplier to purchase, that simply you can call as purchase orders. The purchasing department will place purchase order. Okay. They'll create the purchase order. Okay. Or I'll say simply they'll create purchase order. In short, you can call as PO. PO. So fine. Here this requisition you can call as purchase requisition. For purchasing purpose, you are creating requisition. This you can call as purchase requisition. In short, you can call as PR. Fine. So they'll create the purchase order. It's all about placing the order to suppliers saying that this quantity of material will be required within these many days and uh, to where supplier has to supply the material. So after creating the purchase order, within the purchasing department, they have to get the approvals. Okay, they have to get the approvals. So once, because this is a very important document, okay, once we place the purchase order, there will be response from the supplier. Supplier will supply the material. That is the reason the purchase order, whatever they create, they have to get the approvals for purchase order. So they'll get approvals for PO. Okay, after getting the approvals, they'll they'll just send that purchase order to the supplier. It could be soft copy or hot copy or communicating phone communication, whatever it may be. They'll just They'll create the purchase order or else let me write. They'll place the order, they'll place purchase order to the supplier with approvals. That should be approved. Okay, they need approvals. With approvals, they'll place the order within the internally, they have to get the approval within the purchasing department and they'll place the purchase order to the supplier. Whenever supplier will receive the quotations from the purchasing department, they'll respond to that purchase order, whatever the material or say what are the goods is mentioned in the purchase order and when we require those material and which location the material need to be shipped, supplier will deliver that material. Whenever our organization receives the material, that should be recorded as a receipt. Okay, so supplier will supply the material. Whenever our organization will receive the material, so that would be recorded as a GRN or simply you can call as a receipt. Okay. So GRN stands for goods receipt note or simply you can call as, will record the receipt. We'll place the order, our organization will receive the material, so we can create the receipt. So the receipt can be created by purchasing department or inventory department. In the two departments, any, any department can do. As per our applications also, the receipts can be created from inventory department as well as purchasing department. Ideally, the stock update will happen in the inventory department only. Okay, anyone can take the responsibility of creating the receipt. So that's how we'll receive the material into inventory. So sometimes once we receive the material, if there is any damage, Okay, so that material need to be written back to the supplier. Okay, that you can say purchase returns. Okay, the purchase returns. This activity can be done by purchasing department or inventory department. Any department can do within our application also. This you can perform from any application. So purchase returns. So ideally this is the primary responsibility of Inventory department. What inventory department is doing? The primary responsibility is maintaining the stock. If any requirement in the organization, the inventory department is responsible to raise the purchase requisition, PR, 
and they have to take the approvals. Once it's approved, that information they have to pass to purchasing department saying, we have a requirement and we got the approval, please work on it. And based on the approved requisition, the purchasing department will raise the RFQ, request for quotation. That means they will be requesting for quotations from the multiple vendors and they'll receive the quotations from the vendors. Once they receive the quotations, they'll do the quotation analysis. After performing the analysis, they'll choose the best quotations. Okay, it could be one or multiple, totally depends what quantity, what material, what goods, etc. And after choosing the best quotation, they'll place the purchase order to the supplier with approvals. Internally, they have to get the approval for the purchase order. And whenever we receive the material from the supplier, we'll record the same in the system or we'll record in the, our books, GRN. It's nothing but goods receipt note or simply you can call as receipt. Okay. And if any damage or anything wrong with that material, whatever we received, we can do the purchase returns. We can perform the purchase returns. Ideally, it may not be the regular activity. Whenever it is required, we do the purchase returns. But typically, this is a standard process the purchasing department follow. Say today we purchased laptop. And tomorrow again, we want to purchase laptop. Again, you don't need to go with the complete process, right? Today you purchase laptop means you identified best suppliers. So in that case, again, you don't need to, today only you purchase, tomorrow if you are going to purchase within one day, things cannot be changed too much in terms of price, etc. So in that case, tomorrow if purchasing department is going to raise the new requisition for same material laptops, in that case, again, they are not going to raise RFQs, they are not going to receive quotation, no quotation, also choosing the best quotation. Already they know who is the best supplier, who is giving the best price, directly they will raise the purchase order. They will place the purchase order, they will receive the material, that's it. So this is how the purchasing department will come into the picture if anything needs to be purchased. So here, purchase requisition is raised and materials are received by inventory. Done. Now we have to make the payment to the supplier. Now what purchasing department will do is, the purchasing department will pass this GRN information with the payables department saying we purchased so and so material from so and so supplier, we accepted to pay within 10 days or 20 days or immediately. That GRN information purchasing department will pass to payables department once the GRN information is received by payables department, the payables department will create purchase invoice in their books. Okay, so within the purchase invoice, what information you can see, who is the supplier, how much we have to pay, okay, and when we have to pay, how we have to pay, where to send the payment, all the details you can capture into this purchase invoice. So as per purchase invoice, we have to pay within 10 days, once we arrive the 10 days, okay, the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payment. They will make the payment against the purchase invoice. So inventory is taking the initiative by raising the purchase requisition. The purchasing department is helping to get that material into inventory. At the same time, the purchasing department is passing the receipt information with the payables department. The payables department should make the payment. Before making the payment, they should maintain the proper record to which supplier, how much, when, where, how, they have to process for that reason with all the details they'll maintain the purchase invoice so one, once they arrive the due date they'll make the payment okay so here we discussed about laptop the laptop will get into inventory and will be supplying to the customers so even if you want to buy some properties assets okay same thing, like we have to raise the requisition within the organization. The purchasing department will say, for example, you want to purchase the land. Okay. Your company wants to start another branch. Okay. They want to buy the land and they want to construct the building there. They want to start the operations. So in that case, say your organization want to buy the land. If your organization is going to buy the land, you have to raise the requisition internally and purchasing department will contact the some agents okay maybe real estate agents they will contact and they'll give the requirement they'll ask for quotation in so and so area these many square feet we required okay the price and all you can just provide all those quotations they'll ask they'll receive the quotations from the 
I mean, whatever the lands are available, they'll get all that complete information, they'll analyze, they'll take the decision, what is the right location and what is the price, etc., from whom they can buy and all. So that's how they will be finalized. That means purchasing department will involve. Once the land is purchased, okay, the purchasing department here will pass that information to payables department. We purchase the land for our organization to be, construct a building or some other purpose and please make the payment. So the purchasing department will be passing those details to payables department. In that case, payables department should create the purchase invoice to make the payment for the land what organization purchased. So in this scenario, the purchase invoice will belongs to asset related purchase. See the purchase invoice may be related to some stock related purchase or the purchase invoice may be related to some service related purchase, right? You may take some services, okay? And you have to make the payment to who provided those services. In that case also you can create purchase invoice. The purchase invoice you can create for asset related purchases the purchase invoice you can create for goods related purchases which will be storing in the inventory and the purchase invoice may be related to services okay for different scenarios we will create the purchase invoices so if the purchase invoice is related to asset related purchase the payables department will be passing that information to asset department saying that we purchased one land okay the procure purchasing department purchased one land for the organization and these are the details related to that purchase. That's how the payables department will be passing the asset related purchase invoice with the asset department. So once asset department will receive asset related purchase information from payables department, the asset department will create in their books that as an asset. The asset name is land. So if purchase invoice related to goods, the payables department is not going to share that information with the asset department. If the payables department, okay, if the purchase invoice is related to asset, then only the payables department will share with the asset department. But the reason is the asset department is responsible to maintain asset related information. What are the assets are owned by company or what are the assets company is using, which they are used, taken on lease base, whatever it may be. Okay, what are the assets we have for our organization all need to be managed here. That is the reason if any purchase invoice is recorded in the payables department, payables department will be passing that information to asset department. Based on that, asset department will create the asset. That simply you can call as fixed asset. Land is fixed asset, not current asset, right? So they'll create that based on that asset related purchase in, in invoice information, asset department will create asset. So it could be land or it could be building or it could be vehicle, anything so that they'll create as an asset. So take example, they purchased one building that they created in the asset department as asset. Based on the when time goes, we have to reduce that value, which we call as a depreciation. It could be vehicle or building in case of land and all there, there could be appreciation generally, right? So they'll be calculating the depreciation if it is applicable. Okay. So primarily, the asset department will maintain all the assets or say simply you can say fixed assets. Okay, land, building, machinery, vehicles, etc, etc, furniture, all they will maintain in the asset department based on the usage they will be calculating the depreciation. Now, what else the payables department do? The payables department is sharing this purchase invoice information with the asset department if this purchase invoice is related to asset. But it could be that purchase invoice may be asset related purchase invoice or service related purchase invoice or goods related purchase invoice. Whatever it may be, the payables department should make the payment. Whenever payables department will make the payment, the payables department will share this payment information with the cash department. Okay. So, okay, the payables department will share this payment information with the cash department. What is the responsibility of cash department? Cash department responsibility is they'll maintain bank accounts. What are the bank accounts are owned by organization? The department will maintain those bank accounts. And the cash department other primary responsibility is bank statement reconciliation. Okay, they will involve in the 
bank statement reconciliation. So as per payables department, okay, as per payables department, they processed in this month 10 payments. What cash department will do is they'll take those 10 payment records from the payables department and they'll cross check with their bank statement in this month. As per payables department records, they process 10 payments, but bank statement shows 11 payments. Then the cash by doing the bank statement reconciliation, they'll come to know as per payables department records, 10 payments only processed. But as per bank statement, 11 payments are processed. What about the additional payment? Maybe the payables department issued on check, they forgot to record in their books. Since they issued, that is reflecting in the bank statement. The check came for clearance and all. That's how they can identify. Or else, as per payables department, the cash department received from payables as they process 10 payments. Okay, but bank statement shows only eight payments in this month. They have to identify the reason. As per payables department, 10 payments they processed. As per bank statement, only eight payments. Yes, they issued 10 checks to supplier. Okay, they, they may not submit the checks in the bank for clearing. That could be the reason. That's how they can identify what causing for the difference and all. That's how they can rectify. Or else ideally we do the bank statement reconciliation to prevent the fraud. Okay. So maybe if you are not doing the reconciliation and all, the people will just, uh, they, they can take the advantage of loopholes and all. That is the reason if you are keep doing the reconciliation and all, you easily you can identify. Or a simple example, as per payables department, 10 payments you processed, bank statement shows 12 payments. When you identify, maybe the accountant might have issued the check to some unknown person. Okay, with his interest. So if you are not doing the reconciliation, verification between your books and bank statement, you cannot identify those two additional payments which are done by the accountant. If you do the reconciliation, you can come to know there are two additional payments are processed. Those are not recorded in the payables department books. So you can find out and you can question and you can verify, you can find out. Okay, you can just find out what is the reality. So that's the reason cash department always involved in the bank statement reconciliation where they'll reconcile bank statement with the payables department records payments. And uh, there will be common department. Okay. Common department means we'll be taking the responsibility of reports preparation. So what all the departments will do is the, all the departments will be sharing the information with the common department so that common department will prepare the financial reports. Okay, so this is a typical the procurement process, how it flows and where it ends. The actual procurement starts with the inventory and ends with the purchasing department. The rest, how the data flows. Okay, so just procurement. Procurement starts with the requisition in the inventory department and the purchasing department will go up to that getting the material from the supplier it will end just procurement activities will end with this department but the rest of process how it flows once the purchasing department will purchase so the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payment for that reason they have to maintain the pay purchase invoice how they create the purchase invoice based on the GRN information they'll create the purchase invoice and they'll make the payment if the purchase invoice related to asset purchase the payables department will share that information with the asset department so asset department will maintain that information as a fixed asset based on the usage they calculate the depreciation what are the payments are processed by payables department the payment information the payables department will pro, uh, will share with the cash department the cash department will do the bank statement reconciliation apart from the cash manage, cash department Will maintain the bank accounts so finally all the information okay this is all the information all the departments will be sharing with the common department based on this what sort of reports are required based on the activities which happened at each and every department this common department can create any sort of reports simply they may create the financial reports all other reports can be just done from the respective application if required those can be done from here so this is a typical procurement process.
from the beginning of requisition to till we make the payment okay basically this is the core activities we raise the requisition and we'll get the material and it will the process ends with the payment but the communication still it will go on like payables department will share asset related and purchase invoice with asset department this payables department will share payment with the cash department but this department under this department these departments completely internally data maintenance purpose only okay this department won't interact won't deal with the suppliers or customers so these are the three departments which will be involving in the actual business process okay the other department just to manage the information which would be resulted based on these department activities okay so any questions here to understand this process flow please any questions on this place great no questions now we'll see so inventory department what inventory department is doing stock maintenance raising the requisitions approvals apart from this you can do n number n number of inventory related transactions that we'll see in our classes but just to understand very high level this process we are taking very key activities which can be done by inventory department okay to maintain the stock and to raise the requisitions to handle the approvals and all from oracle we have an application called as oracle inventory okay simply you can call as oracle fusion inventory or oracle fusion cloud inventory okay in short you can call it as inv okay so oracle fusion cloud inventory application by using oracle fusion cloud inventory application okay you can use the you can maintain the stock and you can use i mean you can uh, create the purchase requisitions you can do the approvals along with this we have pima also which will support to perform the inventory related transaction that once we get into that application will explain to understand this process take that name okay by using oracle fusion cloud inventory application you can maintain the stock and you can do the material related transactions and if any requirement in the organization for stock the purchasing the, the inventory department can raise the or else by using the oracle fusion cloud inventory application you can raise the purchase requisitions and you can get the approvals and that information you can pass to purchasing department so what purchasing department is doing all these activities okay rfqs creation receiving the quotations quotation analysis best quotation etc etc all these activities you can perform by using the application called as oracle fusion cloud purchasing the short name for purchasing is po because out of all these activities out of all these activities the primary activity is raising the purchase order you may do everything if you don't place order to supplier you don't get anything into organization so out of all these activities the key activity when purchase order we call as legal document okay so placing purchase order is very essential as a part of purchasing department so that is the reason so for purchasing application short name is po Okay. So by using Oracle Fusion Cloud Purchasing application, or simply you can call as Oracle Fusion Purchasing also. Yes, you can use that application through cloud or without cloud. Just we, just now we discussed. Okay. So ignore cloud anyway. In cloud only will be using. But let's call with this name Oracle Fusion Inventory, Oracle Fusion Purchasing. If you include cloud in that, nothing wrong. That is true. You can include. Okay. By using Oracle Fusion. purchasing application you can do all these activities and what payables department is doing they are recording the purchase invoice and do. they are recording the payments they are processing the payments against the purchase invoice to do these activities we have an application from oracle called as oracle fusion accounts payable simply you can call as ap by using oracle fusion accounts payables are say by using ap we can create the purchase invoice and we can process the payments okay and 
this accounts payables department will pass this purchase invoice information with asset department if the purchase invoice is related to asset purchase so in that case asset department will maintain that information as a fixed assets and they'll calculate the depreciation to maintain the fixed assets and to calculate the depreciation and to do other asset related activities okay to other asset maintenance related activities we have an application from oracle that we call as oracle fusion fixed assets In short we call as fa okay what else this ap department is doing what are the payments they are processing to the suppliers that information they'll pass to this cash department this department responsibility is maintaining the bank accounts and performing the bank statement reconciliation so to maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliation the cash department for cash department we have an application from oracle called oracle fusion cash management this you can call as cm or ce okay cash management cm from oracle side there is separate application called also called cost management that also we call as cm that is reason so when there are these uh, cash management and cost management cash management application simply you can call as ce or else you can call as cm also ce means cash entry system nothing but cash management so by using oracle fusion cash management you can maintain the bank accounts and you can do the bank statement reconciliations and finally all this information will pass to common department where we can prepare the reports for this oracle has an application called as oracle fusion general ledger we call it as gl okay we call it as gl so we have oracle fusion general ledger application from oracle by using this you can prepare the financial reports now here to understand the actual standard process flow we are just taking these topics these points but each and every application got lot lot of functionality to handle that department related activities that we'll see once we get into the respective application for now this is what we have to understand so this process okay so this complete process simply we call as p2p cycle okay or simply you can say procure to pay cycle okay procure to pay cycle in short you can call as p2p p stands for procure is p stands for to again p stands for pay cycle okay this we call as procure to pay cycle so procure to pay cycle so what what do you mean by procure to pay cycle means this is what we have to explain so when you attend for interviews definitely this is a basic thing everybody will ask us so what do you mean by p2p cycle explain okay so here we have to talk about all these points if any requirement in the organization inventory department will take the responsibility of raising the requisition and should get approved once it is approved that information will be passed to purchase department purchase department will Place the RFQs and they'll receive quotation. They'll do the analysis. They'll choose best quotations. They'll place the orders with the approvals. Once organization will receive the material, will record the receipt. If any purchase returns, okay, will record in the purchasing department or inventory. You can say. So based on the receipt information, the payables department will create purchase invoices and they'll process the payment. If purchase invoice related to asset purchase, they'll pass to the asset department. they'll maintain the the same information as asset and they'll calculate the depreciation the payments information payables department will pass to cash department based on that the bank accounts can be i mean based on that they'll do the bank statement reconciliation along with that cash department will take the responsibility of maintaining the bank accounts and all the information can be shared with the common department to prepare the financial report this is how you can explain by including the term called as departments or else you can say 
if you talk about if you want to talk about application based okay simply you can say if any requirement in the organization through inventory application with oracle inventory or oracle fusion inventory you can raise the request you can get the approvals then by using the fusion purchasing application you can create rfp or you can record the rfqs whatever is from supplier you can choose the analysis you can choose the best one you can place the orders or you can record the receipts you can do all these things this is how you can explain but ideally when you talk about this process just take example as a department only use the department for each and every department oracle got separate application they build separate application to manage their department related activities if somebody is going to ask or if you are going to present to someone about the p2p cycle this is how you have to explain okay the inventory department will raise the requisition if there is any uh, shortage in the stock and they'll get the approval then then they'll pass that information to purchasing department based on the approved requisition purchasing department will create the rfqs they'll receive the quotation they do the analysis they'll choose best they'll place the order recording the gr and purchase returns just explain by taking the name as a department and stuff taking the application but to understand our application process this is what we have to understand this we call as p2p so out of this p2p cycle these four applications falls under financials these four applications are financials so these two applications are are scm applications okay that means in the p2p cycle primarily the two applications are involved from our scm there is one more application that is a application or a department sales department for sales department we have order management application that we can see in the process of o to c order to cash cycle okay so that's all about p2p okay maybe in the next session we'll talk about that other sales process sales cycle and there which departments will be involved what is the activity of each and every department we'll understand these points we have to be we have to be very clear because whatever we are going to do those will be within this application when you are going to work on purchasing department if you have a proper understanding why we are creating rfq you understand inventory department will raise the requisitions that is the reason we have to create rfq how this purchasing department is going to communicate with the payables department or say how that how the data flows from the oracle fusion purchasing to oracle fusion accounts payable application you can have a better understanding okay so based on the receipt information the accounts payables application you can create the purchase invoice or else you can create based on the purchase order also there are different scenarios we will be testing in our classes but this is what you have to understand as a p2p cycle procure to pay cycle why we are calling it a cycle it is a cycling activity today if you are if you need something you have to follow the cycle you have to raise the request you have to get the approvals and every time these activities may not be required you have to place the order you have to receive the material that has to be passed to payables department the payable should pass the information if required if that is asset related purchase to asset department payment information to with this department all the data to general ledger application or general common department this is cycling activity whenever you want to buy something this cycle you have to follow that is the reason this we are calling as p2p cycle procure to pay right from procurement to till payment the cycle can be covered okay the procurement starts from here it ends with the payables department only right procure to pay okay right from procurement initiate to till we make the payment the cycle will covers but these are the three core departments or core applications which primarily involved in the p2p cycle so with this application these applications are connected these departments or applications will have a communication that is reason these also we have to understand what are the primary departments involved in the p2p cycle means inventory purchasing and order management in terms of applications which are oracle fusion inventory oracle fusion purchasing oracle fusion accounts payable applications okay but consider all these points when i talk about procure to pay cycle any questions from anyone to understand this p2p cycle we have to be strong in this in terms of understanding then once we get into that application what will be doing across the application we'll see when you work on the p2p cycle sorry yeah the same p2p cycle will be testing will be testing this complete cycle so all will be testing this is how the data flows this again data goes to cash cash management fixed assets also but that will be taken care by finance for our understanding even we will do the setup for 
this application we'll see how the data flows to here and how the invoices can be created based on the purchase orders receipts etc etc how to create invoices here automatically and the manual process everything will test finally we'll send the data to gl also this this cycle this process only the system point of view this is what we are going to see okay as a process P2P cycle point of view, just try to understand these additional two departments also, what purpose, where it will come into the picture. Any questions on this, please? So, Lakshman, is there any, uh, you know, this sub-ledger accounting concept within this, uh, you know, when we are posting transaction to GL? Yes, that, in cloud version? That is there, that is there. same as EBS we have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I can talk on that, but uh, now we are not working on that concept. Otherwise, yeah. Can, yeah. As a got your point. Yeah. The point you are asking, so I'm just saying yes or no. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Fine. If no questions, we can wind up for today. Any questions, please? Okay. Seems to no questions. Then that's all for today. In the next session, we'll talk about sales process and few other points. Before we get into the application, we'll discuss more detail level. Then we can uh, we'll start with the system again. We'll discuss few other concepts. And once we get clarity on that, we'll try with the, try on the system. Okay, bye. Thank you.